Hey everybody, uh, listen, I'm gonna run through really quick a quick LEQ tutorial for our comparison essay uh, in preparation for what we're gonna be writing tomorrow. Um, and I just wanna kind of make sure that we have a, a firm grasp of the things that you're expected to do. So let's get right into it. All right, so tomorrow you're gonna be writing your first comparison essay. And what you have to understand is that there's two different possible prompts that you could, you could see. Uh, the first type of prompt is the one that you're going to see above where it says prompt one. And this is where you're comparing two things within a the same time period. So if you look at prompt one, evaluate the ways uh, in which Federalists differed from Democratic Republicans in political views from 1789 to 1815. So I'm, I'm comparing the political parties of the 1790s. We're talking about the exact same time, but we're talking about two different groups within that time range. The second prompt is slightly different. Same skill, but they're asking you to compare things across time frames. So evaluate the extent to which colonial religious revivals differed with religious movements of the antebellum period. So in other words, compare like colonial religious revivals, the first great awakening to the uh, religious revivals of the second great awakening. You know, what's different? What's the same about those two things? All right. So uh, it is you have to under, be aware of like exactly what you're being asked to compare and the different time ranges uh, that you're supposed to be looking at when you get your prompt and you start to break it down tomorrow. So we're going to look at the first prompt as an example of how to create a comparison essay. So the first thing that we're always going to do is we're going to break down that prompt. So if we say evaluate the ways in which Federalists differed from Democratic Republicans in political views from 1789 to 1815, just like if this was a continuing change over time, uh, we want to break it down for number one, what is our skill? Well, uh, the, the key word here is differed. Uh, and so I know it's comparison, but um, I want to go a little further than that because it's saying differed. I know that I'm looking for differences. That's the main key here. So I'm going to set up my essay to have two differences and then one similarity. My A and my B are going to be differences. My X is going to be uh, that similarity. Uh, the next thing I want to ask is like, what exactly am I comparing? So in this case, it's the Federalists versus the Democratic Republicans. So I'm talking about comparing political parties here, specifically the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. Sometimes they'll give you specifically the two groups that you're supposed to be uh, comparing. Sometimes they'll allude to it. OK, so uh, it, you, it might not be always this obvious, but you got to kind of figure out exactly what your areas are or your points of comparison. Otherwise, this the, the question is going to be very difficult. All right. Uh, we want to see if there's, is there a force or is there something that I'm supposed to be kind of uh, looking for a comparison in regards to? Uh, in this case here, it says in terms of their political views. And so I know I'm, I'm comparing Federalists and Democratic Republicans, but I'm not comparing their leaders. Uh, I'm not compl comparing like where they're located. I need to focus on how they view politics. And then the time period here is 1789 to 1850. So I have to limit my response to that. And all my evidence, uh, at least for my body paragraphs, has to come from that time range. Okay, so my next step after I've broken down the, the prompt is I want to start to just brainstorm as much evidence as I possibly can kind of think of. What, what do I know about anything, any events that are tied to the Democratic Republicans, uh, the Federalists, or just this time period in history? Okay, so uh, you want to do this really quickly. You don't want to spend too much time, but what are the first things that come to mind? Um, and just kind of really quick rattle them off, get them down, because this is a good springboard for coming up with those categories that we want to do next. OK, so this is a list here that I put together of maybe just some of and there are more some of the pieces of evidence that uh, you might be able to come up if I was looking at this question. You would in no way be expected to know all of this evidence or have this much stuff down. Um, but obviously, the more I have, the more specific I can be, uh, the easier the next step is. OK, so that takes us to our next step, which is where we're going to start to create categories here. So um, I'm going to take a look at my evidence. I'm going to see, OK, based off of like the terms and events that I came up with, do I see maybe areas where the, the Federalists and the Democrats, uh, Democratic Republicans were, were maybe different? I see areas where they were similar. Um, I also at the same time want to ask myself, OK, what do I know about these political parties in general? Um, and so like sometimes maybe uh, if I don't know a lot about these parties, the, the pieces of evidence will help me kind of remember 
what I, I know about these parties. Oh, looking at this list, um, I remember, oh, yeah, the, the Federalists were uh, in favor of a loose interpretation of the Constitution and the Democratic Republicans were, were strict. For some of you, you might end up working backwards and don't be afraid of that. You might like right away know the differences between the two sides. Like, oh, yeah, I remember weak government versus strong central government pro-business versus uh, pro-agriculture, pro-British versus pro-French. And you might start to kind of like, oh, I don't know, maybe be able to categorize what were the beliefs of the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. From that point, you're then just saying, okay, uh, of this evidence that I looked at, um, what of it, what what pieces of evidence, what events, what terms, what kind of laws would support these, these maybe big differences that I already know? OK, so uh, you can work either way, but just make sure that, you know, you ha- you're starting to kind of form like points of comparison. And that is like the, uh, the most essential thing to do, because here is where a lot of students struggle. OK, so <laughs> what I don't want you to do is write me one paragraph describing the Federalists and then another paragraph f- describing the Democratic Republicans. Because that's not a comparison essay. I'm not asking for a description of each of these different groups. I'm asking you to make arguments that show differences and similarities. And so when I start to create categories, um, if I were to like say just like write a T chart, like the one that I had here, well, like this taken together is one category. Okay, a big mistake that students will make tomorrow is they'll write a one paragraph. Oh, here's all how this is one paragraph. My first body paragraph is how the um, like Federalists believe in a loose interpretation. My second paragraph is how the Democratic Republicans were believed in a strict interpretation. And that's completely wrong. What you want to do is you want to group those ideas into one category. Taken together, they had one area of difference is that they had different views on the Constitution. So I'm going to incorporate both of their views and show how they're different within one body paragraph. And then maybe they had different views on the power of the central government would be a second one. Or they had different views on um, like the economy and the economic development of the, the United States. OK, so make sure you don't fall into that trap tomorrow. Moving forward. OK, so um, once I have my. Um, my differences. Obviously, I want to have a complexity as well. So I need to look for similarities too. And uh, so I might like, this is this is where I'm going to just kind of look f- through my terms and my events. And if I don't know, for example, a similarity off the top of my head, do I see any of these events in which the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans, they agreed? You know, they were kind of on the same page. Uh, in this case, I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, well, you know, Jefferson was... Uh, trying to stay neutral with like, for example, the Embargo Act and the Non-Intercourse Act. Uh, up here, you know, we had, um, you know, the, like for the, the Federalists, you know, Hamilton was a supporter of the Proclamation of Neutrality and he was the leader of the, the Federalists. So maybe like eventual commitment to neutrality. If both were committed to neutrality, it could be a commonality. Or I'm looking at, okay, look at all these events involving Native Americans. Uh, and both the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans seem to be in favor of getting the, the Native Americans off of Western lands and kind of freeing this up for uh, American settlement. If that's the case, then maybe that's another area of similarity. OK, and so I'm, I'm just kind of trying to think through, like, what are the big differences? What are the, um, the similarities? And I want to make sure that I'm coming up with points of argumentation as opposed to just a description of here's one side, here's another. OK, um, and that's really important when we're talking about an argumentative essay uh, like the one that we're doing tomorrow. OK, so our next step is to take that historical evidence, take kind of that that planning and turn them into coherent categories. OK, so um, if we take a look at you know some of the pieces of evidence, I've just kind of started to group them into these two differences and this similarity. So uh, my difference first, the, my first difference is going to be. Uh, they differed on their interpretation of the U.S. Constitution, and we can see that I, from like Marbury v. Madison, Virginia and Kentucky resolutions, Alien Sedition Act. There's actually more, but these are just a few that fall into that category. Uh, a second difference might be that they differed on the best way for the government to foster economic development, um, with the uh, you know the Federalists being in favor of a more commercial and and more trade and business oriented economy, uh, and the 
uh, Democratic Republicans behind the leadership of Jefferson, kind of trying to push for that agrarian society. And then, of course, we've got similarities, and I just went over that. So I'm, I'm going to go with Native Americans were viewed by both as a foreign entity and a threat to westward expansion. Okay, so uh, that's going to make up my, my big categories, and I'm now going to turn this in after step three into my thesis. So here is my thesis. And just like all the other essays that we've written, we're going to take those big categories and we're going to simply apply them to the structure of although X, A plus B. So just kind of plugging in those things that I did on the last step, I'm going to like literally just put it into our format and come up with this thesis that would work and get me points. So although both the Federalists and Democratic Republicans view Native American um, view Native Americans viewed as a foreign, that's not right, that is a complete typo, let's fix that. Um, so although both the Federalists and Democratic Republicans view Native Americans as a foreign entity and a threat to uh, Western settlement, boy, I was going through this fast, sorry about that. Uh, the two parties differed in their interpretation of the US Constitution and on the best way for the government to foster economic development within the country. So I literally just, obviously there's some typos here, I would uh, try to repair that and fix that, but um, obviously I just drop down these things. Here's my X, drop it into, uh, into place, and then my A and my B, and I should have my uh, thesis statement. Uh, it's good, good tip to maybe reread your thesis statement because obviously I messed that up, but uh, I'm going to keep moving. Now, this is super important. Your categories at this point don't have to specify exactly which side of the issue they're on. So you notice my categories that I'm creating are more general. So when I say uh, they differed on their interpretation of the U.S. Constitution, in my thesis, I'm not saying, oh, the Federalists believe this and the Democratic uh, Republicans believe that. I'm just saying they're different in this regard. Um, that's okay. You can be a little bit more general in your thesis. What's going to happen as we get into our topic sentences and we get into our body paragraphs, we're going to be a little bit more specific and we're going to explain you know, how each side uh, viewed the interpretation of the Constitution, for example. Okay. Let's keep going. All right, so that takes us to our contextualization. So uh, when we do our contextualization, you know that's gonna be the first thing in our intro paragraph. So we put our intro paragraph together, we got our contextualization followed by our thesis. And our contextualization, we've been talking about applying this concept of ACE. So we're looking for a big trend that helps us understand and sets up this prompt a citation, a specific term, like a Quizlet term uh, that illustrates that big trend and lets the reader, in this case me, understand that you understand what that trend was about. Uh, and then finally, an explanation. How does it tie into the prompt? What is this contextualization? What does this trend have to do with our understanding of the question? Now, um, as we've been doing all year, it's really useful to just kind of like quickly get into your uh, contextualization without having to like spend a lot of time thinking about your how you're going to word it. And so you always want to try to use these sentence starters if you can. Not because I'm trying to suck the creativity out of your essay, but instead because I'm I'm folk, I'm worried about your timing. You know, if we don't have to think about how do I start this intro paragraph, um, then that saves you time to think about what's really important, which is your trends, your citations, the, the creation of your thesis. So I highly recommend using this structure where it says, in order to understand our topic, um, we must recognize, and then you're going to hit me with your trend, and then we're going to start to elaborate with our citation and our explanation. So we're doing that. Uh, it would look something like this, and we're going to move forward. Okay, so here is an example of a, a sample contextualization that would earn the points. And I've highlighted the A, the C, the E in the contextualization. So your, your, your A or your big trend, and in this case, I'm going to use the ratification of the U.S. Constitution. OK, so it's outside of the time period uh, or actually it's right on the time periods, uh, the exact year that this this uh, era starts. Um, but it's probably not going to be something that I'm going to use in my body paragraphs. Remember, your contextualization can be during the time period or immediately before. Um, and so I use the ratification of the U.S. Constitution because I knew that it wouldn't interfere with anything I wanted to argue in my thesis. Um, or anything that I was going to say in my body paragraphs. Remember, there's a no double dipping, which I'll talk about in a second. So let's look at this. It says, in order to understand the extent to which Democratic Republicans and Federalists differed in their political views, one must first understand the ratification of the U.S. Constitution. There's my trend. 
All right. The ratification of the Constitution was heavily debated with a faction known as the Anti-Federalists arguing that the new government would be too powerful and oppressive. Okay, so there's my citation. My citation is the Anti-Federalists, and I explain that they're a faction and that they were opposed to the uh, Constitution on the grounds that it would it was too powerful of a central government. Okay, now. That's not enough to get my contextualization point. I have to explain why knowing this background helps us understand what I'm going to later talk about with the first political parties. So here's my tie-in to the prompt. The debates between the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists would demonstrate some of the deep divisions in America about the power of the federal government. These divisions would lead to the formation of the first political parties during George Washington's presidency in the 1790s. So that's, that's my, like, if I don't have that last part, if I'm not explaining like my thinking and why I've chosen this contextualization to kind of help us better understand the prompt, then I'm not going to get those points. So just make sure that you don't forget that either. Okay, now this isn't the only contextualization. It's important to know that there are others as well. Um, like some of the other things, just trends when I was brainstorming this that could uh, like come up would be like American Revolution would work. And obviously a lot of the ideas of the American Revolution carry on into the uh, political parties and why the political parties had the ideas that they had stemmed from the American Revolution. So I could do something like that as long as I have a specific citation. The French Revolution is important because the French Revolution, even though it's not happening in this country, uh, is a major world event and it's going to be a, a major cause of dispute between the political parties. It's going to be one of the things that kind of separates Washington's cabinet and creates the formation of these parties. So that could be useful. We could talk about the government before the um the, the Constitution, like the critical period and the Articles of Confederation and how obviously the new government like contrasts with that old government and how that might shape the political parties and their views as well. Uh, but in every one of these circumstances, I need to be um, thinking about how this relates to what I'm going to say and what I'm going to argue about political parties in my, in my essay. And there's your tie-in. Now, Napoleonic Wars works, but I'm going to caution you on that one. Um, this is the kind of one that you're going to risk the possibility of double dipping. Uh, and it's why I think it's it's probably better, if, if you can, to go at the beginning of the time period or immediately before. And I'm saying immediately before. If you're going 100 years before the time period, uh, that's that's not going to work. Um, but going a little bit, the reason why it's probably like the American Revolution or in my mind, like the ratification of the Constitution is better is because I don't risk double dipping. I don't I don't risk taking some of my arguments from my thesis to create a contextualization because you can't get points for both. So not only are you not allowed to like say, like use an argument from your thesis as part of your contextualization, which I do see happening quite a bit, but you're also not allowed to use a citation in your contextualization that you want to use later in your body paragraphs. So you got to like be careful with how you plan and what you choose to, to kind of say. Okay. So that's our contextualization. So that gets us into um, our body paragraphs. Okay. So you're going to have to do two body paragraphs for this coming um, essay. Okay. And, uh, you know, we've done our intro paragraph. Um, our body paragraphs are really going to consist of a topic sentence which is gonna clearly use the words of the skill, meaning, oh, this is how they're different, this is how they're similar, or some sort of uh, simile that means the same thing. Contrast, compare, use the words of the skill. But I clearly need to know, um, when I read your topic sentence and I read your body paragraph, that you're, you're making a point for a similarity or a difference, and exactly what that similarity or difference might be. Um, and then, of course, uh, you're going to include evidence. Now, you need, Two pieces of evidence to get one point um, tomorrow. You want four pieces of evidence to get two points. Um, so if, you know, there is no rule. It's not like, oh, I have to have two pieces of evidence in my second paragraph, my first first body paragraph, two pieces of evidence in my, my second body paragraph. Can you do three body, uh, three pieces of evidence in one, one and another? Yes, uh, you can. Um, but it's probably the easiest way to do it is to, just do two pieces of evidence in your first body paragraph, two pieces in your second. And if you have time, you can go beyond that um, because it gives you room to make an error. But for every one of these pieces of evidence, you need to explain them and you need to tie them back to your, your argument. Um, so let's talk about how you would do that. Now, before we get into the evidence itself, I want to like spend a little bit more time on your topic sentence for uh, your comparison essay uh, because like, 
remember when we looked at the the thesis you're allowed to be a little bit more general in your thesis but by the time we get to our body paragraphs we have to start to explain specifically what is the difference and if and, and how like the different groups that we're comparing or how the different events that we're comparing kind of um like reflect those the bigger category so uh, we're going to begin with the category itself okay either it doesn't matter our a our b our x category and we're going to just make a statement that reflects the category or the general argument that we've already mentioned in our thesis. Um, and we want to obviously use the words of the skill. So like I did this with this one right here. So my first, my first sentence uh, when I go to my body paragraph will be something like this. One major difference between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans were their interpretations of the U.S. Constitution. Good. Okay. And that just directly reflects what I said in my thesis. Here's the problem though. I'm, I'm expecting you to go into a little bit more depth in your body paragraph. So it would probably help you with your argumentation if you may take it, take it a step further by explaining the two sides. What is the Federalist view? What is the Democratic Republican view on the interpretation of the US Constitution? So um, I'm now going to make a statement about where each of them falls. What is their stance? So the Democratic Republicans tended to have a strict interpretation of the Constitution. You can see that right here, while the Federalists interpreted more loosely. And by just adding that second sentence, it makes for a much better, much clearer topic sentence. And it also makes it easier for me to argue my evidence moving forward uh, in, my, in my paragraph. So take it all together, my first two sentences of my, um, my first body paragraph would look something like this. One major difference between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans were their interpretations of the U.S. Constitution. Democratic Republicans tended to have a strict interpretation of the Constitution, while Federalists interpreted it more loosely. And then I can start to get into my evidence and I can start to kind of build that argument. OK, but like just laying out exactly which side uh, each is on or, or what exactly is the difference and kind of getting a little bit more specific right away is going to make for a stronger argument. Let's keep going. All right, so let's talk about how to incorporate evidence. Now that we have our topic sentences, how do we incorporate evidence into um, what we're trying to say? So I did um, a different topic sentence for this one so that you could see different topic sentences that I'm writing. Um, this is my other argument. Uh, the Federalists and Democratic Republicans also disagreed on the best way for the government to promote the economic development of the United States. The Federalists wanted the government to stimulate commerce while the Democratic Republicans believe that the government should promote agriculture, okay? There's my topic sentence. All right, I'm then gonna obviously take a look at, okay, what piece of evidence did I group with this category? So looking back all the way in my planning, uh, you probably saw that I had Hamilton's financial plan and the Louisiana Purchase as my two pieces of evidence that I could use to promote, to, to, to prove the differences between the way that the Federalists versus the Democratic Republicans looked at the economy. Now, when you're writing your evidence and we're writing your body paragraphs, just like we do ACE with contextualization, it also kind of makes sense to follow that same type of structure. Okay. So the way that I look at it, your topic sentence is essentially your A. Okay. That's your overarching uh, idea that you're working off of. So every single time you come across a piece of evidence, you're going to then just complete the ACE, cite and explain. So like cite it and explain the term and then your E is your tie it back. So I don't, that doesn't make sense. So my A is my topic sentence. My C is my citation, which is explained and kind of uh, like, I okay, if I'm using financial, Hamilton's financial plan, I'm not just name drop, I'm gonna say, we can see this through Hamilton's financial plan. Here's what it was. And then my E is my, my tie back. The same way that my E in our contextualization was tied back to the prompt, in this case, I'm tying it back to my topic sentence. So how does Hamilton's financial plan prove that the Federalists were more about commerce and the Democratic Republicans were more about agriculture? So I have an example down here. Um, I did Hamilton's financial plan, uh, and you can clearly see how I'm using that A, C, E structure. So I'd start with my topic sentence here at the top, right here. And then I'd move into uh, my cite, my citation, uh, which is my C. Uh, Hamilton's financial plan was created by Alexander Hamilton um, and attempted to repair, who attempted to repair the U.S. economy after the American Revolution by restoring the nation's credit and creating a national bank. 
Okay. So there's my C. I've not only identified a specific uh, term, but I've explained what that term is. And this comes directly from Quizlet, by the way, which would be a good tool for you uh, for tomorrow if you get stuck. The next part is how does this kind of prove my topic sentence? So how does this relate back to uh, that topic sentence, uh, which is about the differences between an economic uh, vision of commerce versus an economic vision of agriculture? Well, the Federalists believed in a um, an economy that was built on trade. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say something like that. So Hamilton's financial plan demonstrates the Federalist commitment to commerce because improved credit would help America trade with over countries overseas. The plan clearly emphasized trade while doing less to benefit small yeoman farmers. Okay, so um, that's I'm linking it back to that argument that I'm trying to make. Let's kind of open this up and take a look at how this would like function in a full paragraph. So here is a full paragraph, and I've broken it down with an A C E C E. That's kind of how it breaks down. Um, you only have to write the A the A once because that's your topic sentence. So um, let me move this picture here so that you can see this whole thing. There we go. So this is a sample paragraph um, that would kind of like argue. I, th I would say somewhat competently um, for a comparison between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans on their vision for the, the government's role in, in building an economy. So we'll start off with a topic sentence. The Federalists and the Democratic Republicans also degree, disagreed on the best way for the government to promote the economic development of the United States. The Federalists wanted the government to stimulate commerce, while the Democratic Republicans believed that the government should promote agriculture. Okay, so there's my A. I'm laying out my big argument. That's my, that is my uh, topic sentence. Now I need a citation with a tie back for each of my like the terms that I'm going to name here. So Hamilton's financial plan was created by Alexander Hamilton, a Federalist, and it attempted to repair the U.S. economy after the American Revolution by restoring the nation's credit and creating a national bank. I've cited a specific term and I've explained it. Now I need to tie it back. Hamilton's financial plan demonstrates the Federalist commitment to commerce because improved credit would help the United States trade with countries overseas. The plan clearly emphasized trade while doing less to benefit small yeoman farmers. So that's just what we talked about, okay? But here's the thing, we need more than one piece of evidence per, um, per body paragraph if we're really trying to make a comparison. So I'm, I'm gonna then transition to the other side. And you really don't want to be afraid of this. It, in a comparison essay, especially when you're showing differences, you're going to be bringing arguments and ideas from both sides into the same paragraph. So I'm going to be saying like, oh, on the one hand, we've got the Federalists. And on the other hand, we got the Democratic Republicans. So this next sentence transitions to the other side. On the other hand, the Democratic Republicans pushed policies that helped farmers while in office. So I'm transitioning to the other side to, in order to make my comparison. Drop it with another citation. Louisiana Purchase, which was made by Thomas Jefferson, doubled the size of the United States and added new lands to, in the West. Okay, so I've cited the Louisiana Purchase and I've explained what it is. Now I need to tie it back to the my original A, my topic sentence. Louisiana Purchase was very popular among Democratic Republicans because it furthered Jefferson's dream of an agrarian society. With Louisiana Purchase, there was now more room for people to farm. Jefferson would continue to favor agriculture over commerce for the rest of his administration, oftentimes ignoring the demands of Federalists for support for trade. Um, and there's my entire body paragraph, and I can move into my, my next body paragraph. All right, which would be a different category. And I would just follow the same format, okay? So a, a few things you need to notice here. Obviously for like every single, I'm not just, I clearly have a line of argumentation. I'm not just describing the Democrats and talking all, or the Democratic Republicans and talking only about the Democratic Republicans. There's no argumentation there. And I have a clear topic sentence that is clearly drawing a line of comparison, saying here's how they're different. Um, and here's exactly what the Federalists think. Here's exactly what the Republicans think. Okay. And I go on then to have specific citations that illustrate that indeed the Federalists thought this way while the Democratic Republicans thought this way. And I, I use both of those citations, not only just ex to explain what the term is in detail, I don't just name drop it, but then to kind of go into detail how it's furthering the argument that I'm trying to make. 
this whole process doesn't take very long. Um, as, as long as you kind of just understand how to put it together. Um, and almost all of this is content. Uh, the only kind of style style uh, it, like it, that's really going into this essay is this transitional sentence that moves me from maybe like one group, the Federalists, to the other group, the Democratic Republicans. Okay. And, and I've got a comparison essay. Okay. So um, I would then proceed into my next argument, put it together, and I'm done with my essay. Okay. Now, I know this is, feels very structured. It's supposed to be feeling very structured because you have 35 minutes to do this. So the structure is intended to take all the style and all of like the what goes where off your, your plate so you can focus on the thoughts. Like you can focus on, okay, what are my big categories? What are my big points of comparison? What are the best pieces of evidence that I can pull in? How am I going to explain them? How am I going to tie them back? Like that's what you need to be spending most of your time thinking about um, when you actually go to write your essay. So let's talk a little bit about um, like exactly what's happening tomorrow and how it's created. So just a reminder for tomorrow, um, you're going to have the full 35 minutes to plan and write. Uh, pacing is going to be really important. I recommend five minutes of planning, kind of get your thoughts down. It's like maybe you want to draw a Venn diagram or a T chart to kind of lay out your, your points of comparison, whatever helps you organize your ideas. Um, <clears throat> but you only have 35 minutes. Give yourself about 30 minutes to write, okay? Um, and try to limit how much you're looking stuff up. You know, just trust that you know the history and, and just kind of write, okay? Put your ideas down. Um, you have to write three paragraphs, as I said, an intro with a contextualization and thesis, and then two body paragraphs, each with topic sentences, and there should be four total pieces of evidence throughout. Um, it's going to be a comparison, you don't know if it's going to be um, a like focus on similarity. You don't know if it's going to be a focus on difference. You don't know if you're going to be comparing two things across time or two things within a, a specific time range. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff that you need to be looking for and breaking down when you you get your prompt. That's the first thing you should be looking for. Time periods, um, it could be one through five. It's good. The focus is going to be on stuff that we're working on now. But it is possible that if you're asked to compare to something earlier, that you might have to go back a ways in order to kind of find arguments and find evidence. Uh, it's open notes, remember, uh, be prepared, have your stuff in front of you. You can access Quizlet, you can access obviously your book, access your notes, have the stuff that you need in front of you, whatever it makes you feel prepared, have a piece of scrap paper so you can write down your ideas. But remember, it needs to be yours and yours alone. There's absolutely zero communication with other students before, during, and after the exam. Um, and it also needs to be your own words. Any kind of copying and pasting from the internet, even if it's a resource that I gave you, copying and pasting from a Quizlet would be grounds for um, like a academic integrity violation. Uh, make sure that's your own words and your own ideas. And then lastly, um, it's going to be graded on a scale of five. So it looks like this. Here's the rubric. And I went over this in class, but I'm going to remind you again. Um, one point for contextualization. Nothing's changed in terms of that. Like So it's the same way that we've been grading it all year. Uh, one point for thesis. Nothing's changed there. Uh, we're using the although X, A plus B format. Um, remember, your thesis should be at the end of the paragraph, not the first par like sentence of your intro paragraph. Start with your contextualization and then move into your thesis. Uh, we're then going to get into the body paragraphs. There are three points that come from your body paragraphs. You have to have clear topic sentences for both of your body paragraphs, and they need to work. Um, so I need a clear point of comparison for your first body paragraph that works. And I need a clear point of comparison for your second body paragraph that works in order for you to get the argumentation point. Um, and then of course your historical evidence. Once you, I know what is the, the difference or what's the similarity between these, uh, different groups, um, like what evidence proves those differences or similarities. And for each piece of evidence, not only do you have to explain it, you also have to tie it back. If you don't explain it and you don't tie it back, you don't get the point. So I've got like, oh, I, I listed seven things. Well, you didn't explain how any of it ties back to your arguments. You get no points for it. Or if you just um, name dropped like 10 things. Well, I don't know that you really know it. All I know is that you can, you remember the term um, 
Kentucky and Virginia resolutions. But unless you explain what it is, I don't actually know that you understand what those things were about. So make sure that you explain yourself. Um, we kind of use that format that I talked about. Your your ace, you know, ace your and I, uh, Miss Schacht and Miss um, Ulrich um, use a slightly different version of that. Um, they say like name it, explain it, and um, relate it. But it's all part of the same concept. Just always make sure that you know you're tying, you're explaining your citations, and you're tying them back. Okay, and then of course you're not double dipping. That your evidence is. Is you can't use one piece of evidence more than once. You definitely can't use something that's in your contextualization. All right. So tomorrow, I'll, obviously, I'll have um, intervention. And if anyone has any additional questions, uh, feel free to come in, stop by, and we'll talk about them. All right. Hope this helped.